Yeah. Doing good for the community, you know. <laughs> Helping these people learn how, learn how to, you know, be civilized, how to read. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. So when they get out, they'll do good things. <laughs> Fucking BTK. Yeah. Hi, BTK. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Yeah. And we're doing the show. Are we yeah. doing it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted me to leave that shit. I don't give a shit. <laughs> this, this is just normal shit. <laughs> All right, let me give you guys a head up, heads up during the middle of the fucking apocalypse. See, go on to Xbox and go rent Guns Akimbo. Yeah, you could probably rent it other places. Probably rent it other places. So I got it off at Xbox. It, we had one guy in the comment section say, oh, it was shit. You know, I fucking loved it. So did Jenny. It was super fun, yeah. It's kind of like, it's the same premise as Running Man, but it's more futuristic in terms of like, you know, they're, they're live streaming it. You yeah. know, little drones following them and it's like a criminal organization that runs this app that captures people captures criminals and gets them to fight each other and they make a bunch of money off of it so it's kind of like kind of like the running man and it's uh like the running man had a baby with john wick 3 visually it looks like john wick 3 yeah um it's kind of just classic storytelling it's funny man it's real funny real violent real gory yeah coke inspired like a real <laughs> frenetic <laughs> Way it's way it's edited. Yeah, we it's did good though. I like. Yeah, it. we did like a full on kind of review of it, like a longer one. So that'll be on the matinee show. Yeah, uh, so like just giving you guys a heads movies. heads up on it. Yeah, because we just like watched just, it. We had it, we had a good time watching that one. It's um, uh, it it, it kind of tonally kind of reminded me of Birds of Prey, but it was a lot better. It, that would have beat Birds of Prey at the box office easy. I, there was it's a it's a, a foreign film, so they did some shenanigans to probably keep it out of the theaters because they knew it would fucking kick a shit out of a Hollywood movie. Yeah, probably. Yeah, at the box office, it would have, I think, probably would have, you know, probably wouldn't have made as what John Wick made. But you could make, you know, yeah, you could make good money with that. Yeah, because who doesn't love John Wick? I yeah. mean, those are like the best movies. Yeah, there was some kind of, <laughs> some kind of Twitter shit went down where some girl was fucking said some something that was you know said you know using the n-word and shit and the director came in and said leave that girl alone she you're driving her to suicide so then that blew back on him you know pol- political ideology p- political purity and shit which i think all that shit's bullshit you know i don't i don't like those twitter lynch, lynch mobs anyway you know you don't know who you who you're talking to the girl might be retarded <laughs> <laughs> well, probably. That's why I don't get involved in that shit. I don't defend or attack online. I don't give a shit. And if you guys attack each other, I just like it. I just enjoy <laughs> it. Because I don't know you. you know what I, mean? <laughs> I only care about friends and family. You know? <laughs> Rest of y'all are fucking assholes. <laughs> As you, I'm sitting here during the apocalypse. Watch your world fall apart. Let's see what happens afterwards. Let's see what survives. I'm hoping that... I'm just watching these celebrities. I'm fucking laughing at these people. Celebrities are out now trying to podcast and trying to do fucking... They're trying to become YouTubers. Well, what else That's they some do? funny shit. When you got fucking the biggest stars in Hollywood do they're endeavoring to become a damn YouTuber. Think of that, Jenny. We'll see who looks... We were like- ahead of the fucking curve. <laughs> Well, many people were like way ahead of us. Honestly, yeah, but I'm just, we didn't we didn't start until. But it didn't years take after. it didn't take a fucking apocalypse for us to become YouTubers. That's true. But what's funny is that they're shitty YouTubers. They're not funny. Well, you most know, most of them aren't funny. I mean, the thing about it is that celebrities, you know, if they're actors and stuff like that, they need a whole like, support network. And well, teams yeah, that's and shit. like it's not really the same skill set. Yeah, thing. you know what I mean. Yeah, you put some of those late night talk show hosts up there. What's his name? Who's that dude? I've been I've been seeing clips from all of them. Stephen Colbert. He's trying to do shit from home. He's just a fucking dork. I love Stephen Colbert. Yeah. His, well, that's just his act. You know what I mean? His act is tight. I don't agree with a lot of his fucking bullshit, but his act is tight. But you put him put him at home, he's kind of a boring dude. Well, like I said, nobody's like everybody's in their fucking house. Nobody yeah. can get. Nobody has, like, all their makeup crew and everything, so everybody kind of looks like crap, and yeah. it's like, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? At least you're staying at home. Instead yeah. of, like, going out and infecting everybody. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I don't I don't need a whole team of people to to and, and a bunch of lines of cocaine to make me entertaining. I, don't, I think I'm just entertaining the way it is. 
<laughs> people don't have the sometimes <laughs> well i'm a dick too but i'm just saying well, yeah you are at least you just, at least you acknowledge that oh yeah that's part <laughs> that's, that's my, part of his charm that's my fucking superpower <laughs> that's my fucking superpower <laughs> superpower be a, a dick. fucking dick man <laughs> That's true. I like the face he made this then was very funny. Yeah, of course. I feel, I feel so bad for people that only just listen to us, like, on the audio, because you're missing so many, like, facial expressions and stuff, and it's, like, some of the best shit. I was doing that derma roller, my face is all swollen up, I fucking trim my eyebrows a little bit too short. It's fucking funny, man. I just, almost do, like, remember I said it, I was gonna fucking shave my eyebrows off and look like a Terminator? Yeah. I could do that now. Just do it. Yeah. Might as well. Should just shave them all off. Just look look like a fucking look like look like RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> now then you need to get like a RoboCop yeah. outfit. I've declared that I'm done. I'm done bulking. I'm gonna have to lose You've some declared. of this. Declared. Oh, yeah, I've declared. I, I'm gonna have to lose some of this fat, man. I gotta lose about like <laughs> 10, 15 pounds. Well, see, of this, this is what fat. happened. I don't know if it was just because because this is what happens. Like I said, I'm like I it. <laughs> Damn. It's very, very easy for me to gain weight, and I have to be, like, really, really careful, like, what I eat and everything. And it does seem like we'll do good for a little while, because he does most of the cooking, you know what I mean? Almost mm. all of the cooking, really. It's like, yeah. you know, if I if I eat, I, just, I don't have the patience to cook anything. I'll just dump, like, a can of soup in a bowl and eat it. But, um, so it seems like we'll do okay for a little while, and then it just, the, the meals get more and more fattening, like, as yeah. the time goes on. And I do feel like, well, I guess especially now, because... You know, most of the stuff we had was, like, shelf-stable stuff, and a lot of that, like, tends to be fat, because we don't have, like, any fresh meat or any fresh vegetables. Yeah, try to go like down that. there, and, they're, they're fucking and all the meat is gone. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, we just ended up, more. you know, it's like we're ended up eating, like, biscuits and gravy and, like, yeah. all this really heavy stuff, and it's like... Yeah, it's been going on even before this, because I, I was lifting, and I was trying to... I was, my numbers were increasing, but I wasn't able to, like, recover in enough time, so I started just eating to try to heal yeah. up faster. And which it kind of worked, but there's kind of like diminishing returns of that. And then my fucking waistline gets bigger and bigger. So then I, then I, you know, I had Jenny take a fucking video of me real quick, my shirt off. I was walking around so I could see what my back looked like. And man, I was getting like fucking that thick right through here. And I was going, man, I got to lose some of this fucking fat. So I was looking like a little bloated tick. Like I was fucking. <laughs> so I'm going to have to. So I got to switch gears, man. I'm going to come down. I think that shit's funny. That's, I'm gonna come down. I'm, I'm gonna come down on my fucking weight and do a bunch of reps and then fucking go into kind of like caloric deficits and try to fucking trim some of it down. I just fucking don't want to lose the muscle that I gained though. I'm gonna work something out. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's shit you can do. It's like, you can't... It, I don't think it's like just a choice between like, oh, I can be bulky or I can be fat because like some people aren't. There's like another way to do it. I've been, you know, I've been listening to some coaches and shit, you know, where they're kind of... Uh, what do they call it? They call it gain tain. That's where you're maintaining what you gain-tain. had and you're gaining weight. You're gaining you're gaining muscle and you're maintaining your weight. You you maintaining your weight and losing fat at the same time. I'm gonna gain tain. We're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that We're goes. We're gonna see. We're gonna adjust nutrition. Yeah. But well that's good because like I can't eat like a lot of heavy food. Like I said, as you know, not only will I be like super heavy, but it also kinda makes me like kind of sick (laughs) like eating all that really heavy food yeah i feel better if i eat just like a couple like little meals a day or like rather than a big meal Um, but uh what are you doing what's that saying making sure everything's all right making sure everything's all right i was doing that fucking derma roll quit touching your face quit touching your face bloating up a little bit we haven't been anywhere so it's like it's okay the only germs are around here like in the house now now i did go out like on the trail this morning but i'm like really really careful about Cause the only thing I touch is like the fence to get back in our thing, and I always like wash, wash my hands, hands like afterwards. immediately afterwards. You could always wait for a car to come in through the gate and then walk, and then in. just run through. So I don't have to touch anything. Yeah, you don't touch anything. <laughs> and I try, like I said, t- I try to just Jenny run across it, the like... spikes, the car spikes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you go under the fucking like yeah. gate or whatever. Speaking of uh, YouTube, as I was just reading like right before we recorded this, I was just reading an interview with the uh, last podcast on the left guys, and um, it was kind of like it's kind of cool because I I love those fucking guys, and I feel like I mean we started doing this show and it kind of evolved into what we do like 
But then I started listening to them later. And I'm like, oh, okay. So they kind of have like the same, same similar evolution. kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, where I mean, where they talk about serial killers, but they just like make these horrible dark jokes and, you know, uh, kind of shit on the serial killers, which I think, and they kind of have like a similar thing where it's like, we don't want to like make heroes out of these people. It's like, we just want to mock them because, you know, they're terrible. And uh, so I was reading that and I said, <laughs> and they said that they started when they first started the show. Because they're, like, the number two, like, podcast, like, as far as downloads. I think they're the only thing they're behind is, like, one of the NPR, like, uh, shows, which is number one. But their podcast is, like, number two. And um, he said they started out in the basement of a Mexican restaurant. And he's, like, and there was, like, every time it rained, like, it would flood. And there'd be, like, kind of sewage in the bottom of the, on the floor and shit. And he's like, we, uh, he's, like, we went to, like, fucking Goodwill or something and bought all these comforters and stapled them to the walls, like, to soundproof it. And it's, like, and the three of us were just sitting around this card table with, like, fucking mics and everything. And now they're, like, a humongous show. And they have, like, two studios. They have, like, a studio in New York, I think, and a studio in L.A. And uh, they're kind of a big deal and everything. But they were talking about all the different serial killers. And one of them, I can't remember which one, but one of them is fascinated by L. Ron Hubbard and yeah. Scientology. Wow, it sounds like us. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like, so he talks about them all the time. Like, he knew, like, all the shit about them. And he was like, we did a show about L. Ron Hubbard. He's like, you know, because everybody shits on, like, David Miscavige and everybody like that. Yeah. But he's like, you know, he's like, when we, like, talk to people that were Scientologists, like, back in the day. They loved L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, like, it seemed like a lot of them didn't have, even though he was kind of a terrible person, also, probably, ah. he doesn't he doesn't suck as much as Miscavige, but... He, he did some sideways shit, but... He the, sucked in other ways, yeah. but it's, like, it was just funny, like, hearing them talk about it, and they were, like, we were so hoping that if we did a show about LRH, he's, like, I was hoping we'd have, like, the Squirrel Busters, like, if it's, yeah, like, sure. he knows all the terminology and come. everything, and he's, like, he's, like... He's like, me and my wife were even, like, talking about, man, we got to watch where we're going because, like, the fucking Scientologists would be out there. It was like, yeah. it was like and nothing happened. I no. felt like... <laughs> Squirrel Busters were only going... Squirrel Busters only went after ex-Scientologists that were teaching Scientology to other people and... And, and, and not they, taking and money not for And not taking it. money and giving it to the church. They were squirreling the tech, is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, Non-Scientologists, you know, they, they think we're all... What do they call them? Fucking... Um, SPs. Yeah. So they don't really fuck with us. We're not connected with the church. That's but, true. But, uh, yeah, because we've done like a bunch L of. L. Ron or L. R. H. L. Ron Hubbard, he was, um, you know, he founded that whole thing. And by all accounts, he was popular in the church. Yeah. They liked him. He would sit there and put on fucking parties basically and tell you stories about what was happening on other fucking planets and with that fucking what people, you know, just mouth would, of yeah, his. But he was evidently uh, charming Chilling. and entertaining as far as far as you know in the opinion of the cult members. Yeah, they liked him. Uh, I don't think he had kind of a brutal reputation either. No, nothing like Miss Cabbage. Miss Cabbage is fucking mean. Yeah, he's real mean. Uh, but not LRH wasn't. Now certain shit happened under his command. I mean, they infiltrated the fucking FBI. They did indeed. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't know that they did one of the largest infiltrations of the fucking government, basically of all time. Snow they, they White, isn't that what it's? Yeah, Operation, Operation Snow, Snow White. White. Yeah, they were trying to get in charge, get in control of the FBI. It just goes to show you how a group of fucking dedicated people who are very loyal to their organization can do do amazing things. <laughs> and and LRH, certain definitions of amazing. <laughs> well, LRH, LRH was an ex-military guy. He was, you know, and he, he he was a captain of a of a I think it's some kind of naval cruiser. I don't was it a was it a pocket destroyer? I don't really remember I what don't it remember was either. And um, during World War II, so he ran the thing kind of like a paramilitary organization. You know, he even had his version of kind of like the Navy SEALs. They were called the Sea Org, and the Sea Org were kind of like. Scientology Jedis. They wore fucking. They're supposed to be psychic warriors. They wore fucking. But Tom Cruise, his operating level is above. He's not in the Sea Org, but he's higher than a Sea Org member. So Tom Cruise is it like a Scientology Jedi? <laughs> they can read minds, have psionic powers. Mm -hmm. Do I believe it? No. <laughs> Obviously, no. not those guys. <laughs> I do believe in, in psychic abilities, but I don't think they have them because they're too structured and their recruitment pool is the kind of people that join cults. And the kind of people that join cults, 
don't have the personalities for for psionic abilities. <laughs> you have to be a free thinker, and you can't be a free thinker in a cult. And be in a cult, yes. Yeah. Those are two mutually exclusive right. personality traits. Right. <laughs> and a lot of things that kind of, I think, have to do with psychic abilities, and I don't even like that term because I just think they're natural abilities in, in, in animals, uh, is not about control and discipline. It's about the lack of it. It's giving up all and just surrendering and almost going into damn a near death like state. Mind stopping, stopping the conscious mind and allowing the unconscious mind to take over. You get visions, you know. You know uh, what do they call it? Psychokinesis, but I think it's on, from my experience. It's only kind of recurrent, spontaneous psychokinesis which is not under control of the conscious mind. So poltergeist activity. Yeah. Um, but definitely visions and dreaming true, stuff like that. But I don't think the Sea Org can do it. They're not they, the right kind of people. They, they work were, them to death. Well, too. yeah. And you have to be well rested. You can't be under any kind of physical stress. It's not something that you could use in combat, you know. Being ex-infantry and then having some paranormal... Events happen to me, you know, like NDE and OBE and Poltergeist. It's, you couldn't be under the stress of com, uh, under the stress of uh, combat and be psychic at the same time, because the stress of con, uh, st the stress from combat is very material and materialistic in the here and now. It's not this ethereal higher. You know what I mean? It's, it's not this Buddhist thing. To get them both at the same time, like the show in the Jedi, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, I get... And actually, I was laughing at, like, when, you know, the last podcast on the left, when he was talking about the Scientologist, and he's like, I feel like the... T this is paraphrasing, but he's like, I feel like the type of people that it's like, they think they have magic powers, like, they legit think yeah. they have magic powers. And he's like, I feel like this is the kind of people that are all in one room and say, Deborah's gonna walk through the wall, and then, she, <laughs> and then she's like, hey, did I do it? Oh, I think you actually got, like, an inch yeah. into the wall this time, actually. Yeah. <laughs> actually, you know, having studied ex-cult members, you know, by listening to their YouTube shows and shit and just doing, you know, sizing them up. Some of my, some of the famous ones, some of the famous ones I've actually spoken to online. I'm not going to name any names because they're embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> the type of person that ends up joining Scientology and becoming Sea Org, which is their version of the priesthood, is the type of person that would like be way, way into Star Trek conventions. It's that same kind of... No offense to Star Trek. No Trekkies offense to that, because, but no. Because like, I love Star Trek. It's almost kind of <laughs> like... Let's be, okay, Star Trek conventions of the 70s and the 80s. Okay, you're talking about... you know When it wasn't like... When it wasn't mainstream. It was yeah. kind of like, you know, they were almost kind of like uh, Asperger's slash kind of... Uh, uh, what's that shit called? Autism. They're kind of like autistic almost they're not not the kind of people that can function in 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 a social situation real well extremely nerdy extremely extremely nerdy to where well, the the ones that the ones that i talked to that were still in it because like i said you know i used to live in clearwater a long time ago and i worked at a company that was owned by them even though it wasn't you know they didn't like do scientology it wasn't a church or anything like that it was just a printing company but uh, it was all owned by Scientology, and a lot of people that worked there were Scientologists. The weird thing that I got about them, they weren't, they weren't nerdy. Um, it was. Did they join, or were they born into it? Though uh, some of them were were born into it, and some of them joined later. Okay. Um, but the, I don't know. It's like it's really hard to like put your finger on. They were just like very very strange people you could tell that they were trying to and maybe this is what you mean when you say like something like autism it almost seemed like they were trying to you know mirror your um reactions and like the way you talked and stuff like that because they didn't know because i think they, they do act yeah it, they do it because they're trying to like relate to you and stuff but i think also it's just because they're kind of like weird and empty inside and they don't really yeah. know how like a human being acts well the ones that that's I kind of how they came off to me the ones that i mostly studied were ones that joined yeah and the kind of person that joins can be very different from the kind of person that was born that was in. born into because the person that was born into it has no choice so i would think kind of like the qualities of the ones born into it would be better 
than somebody who joined. Somebody who joined was still they're still fucking weird though. They were weird because yeah, but a person who joined, I'd probably even weirder because they're kind of like running from something and looking for something else, and they're trying to fulfill. I've noticed it's not just Scientology; it's any cult. People that I ran into in Boston who were into joining these goddamn cults to try to seek what was the fucking word that there's one of my worked with for a while, and this fucker would join a cult for a few months and then leave it and join another one for a few months. It was all this Eastern and Indian pseudo Indian type, you know, yoga type shit. What was the word that he constantly used? Trying to find spiritual, um, trying to use the exact phrase that he used. Not enlightenment? No. Transcendence? No. Shit. Shit, it's been so long since I thought of that (laughs) fucking loser. He used to use it over and over again. I'm trying to find my spiritual, something or another. My spiritual. And it's just this fucking jargon. I'm going, what the fuck is this dude talking about? I said, dude, man, what's your paycheck? What'd you make last week? You know, that's not spiritual enough for you? You know, that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? It's just some people have this driving instinct in them to be involved in some kind of a religion that tells them some kind of truth. Which I don't... It's an alien concept to me because... Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> you know, I kind of grew up around religions and that's not... That's not how... That's not what they're like. That's not a religion. Religions just aren't like that. But there are some people who are... Think that they are. And I don't know if that person came from a religious family or maybe a, a family that had no religion and they felt that, well, if I gain a religion i'll feel better about life yeah because i do I, think I, i'm not like, like you know i i'm not shitting on people that are like looking for a meaning in life or something like that but the thing about people that join cults it's like they seem to think that there's like one answer that's yeah. gonna like solve everything or like solve other problems that are, it will make me happy it'll do this and that and there's just no such thing right. it's like really you just have to find meaning in you know stuff that you love stuff that you like to do it's there's no one answer out there that's like the right thing for everybody yeah i'm trying to remember trying to complete my spiritual journey or some shit like that where everything was some kind of spiritual journey and it was just yeah my boss i've known a couple people my boss and here here the guy talk like that and she would just like look at me like this motherfucker is crazy you know what i mean she's (laughs) looking at me like he's a fucking dork you know (laughs) because there's an element of there's an element of scam in all that. Well, yeah. You know? And I was in a company that was very heavy, very heavy in direct sales. And even though you have a good product, there's a certain way you have to sell things directly. There's an element of scam in everything. Yeah. You know? All businesses have an element of scam in it. And what we were doing was so similar to what, say, like, a religious cults were doing. Mm-hmm. You know, some people have, no, have. There's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of similarity between what happens in the corporate world and what happens in religions. You know, it's all PR, sales, sales yeah. techniques, high pressure yeah, sales pitch. techniques, pitches. Yeah. That's what you're doing. So, I mean, we actually knew people that would leave the company and go into the religion sector. Yeah. And go do that. The religion sector. The religion sector. I love it. And go make money in the religion sector for yeah. a while. You know what I mean? And it's. And, and we were selling a physical object, okay? Yeah. They were selling a notional object, a yeah. fucking imaginary object, something they could never prove. Yeah. You know, some shit out of fucking yoga, you know, or some Indian thing or Which, some so fucking... You need, yeah, so you need, like, you know, that much more, like, yes. scam on top yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Because at least if you're selling somebody... I mean, right. everything... It's basically you're just trying to, you know, separate people from their money. Basically, right? basically. But at least with something like when you're selling a product. A product like you sell vacuum cleaners or you sell or a magazine ice cream or, or something. you sell an Amway. At least there's a physical product. At least product. you're getting something yeah, for yeah. your money. Right. Even though it might not be what you wanted or right. it might not be. But, you know, the thing about religion and, you know, and cults and things like that, they're trying to sell you something that, you know, you can't probably it. doesn't exist and it's you like can't not. Touch it. Right. You know what I mean? So you just have them sit in a lotus position, or you have them say a bunch of alms, and then you give them like a fucking saffron colored fucking robe and shit. <laughs> Send them to the airport yeah, like to collect that's right. money you and a tambourine. Them, you make them, they get do beyond, that make them get beyond certain physical boundaries where you don't have to protect a pussy. Just give the pussy. Everybody, be- it belongs to everybody, and that's fucking what they're doing. I can't believe that women would be like, yeah, it oh, yeah, legit. yeah, it does belong to everybody. Yeah, share. <laughs> 
It's like, yeah, no, thank you. Share. <laughs> you just walk up to some woman, lift her leg, share. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm just, that was fucking, I'm just keeping this over get here. Get beyond, get beyond your selfishness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. That is the biggest load of horseshit ever. The sex is always one. Sex and money really at the root of all those fucking Well, cults. yeah, of course. But what's strange about Scientology is that sex wasn't abuse. That's the that only the one that thing. I can think of that That's is the only not... one that it didn't take advantage. Well, evident, not officially, they were not taking advantage of women. Didn't seem like. I mean, you know, it's, no. it's hard for me to believe that there wasn't some of that shit going on. But... They were sexually uptight. Yeah, it definitely does seem like the only yeah. cult that I can think of that didn't have like yeah. a weird sexual component. Yeah, like even that one dude, that dude is like a fake Indian fakir. Remember that where he was ma yeah. made made on the surface everything looked asexual. That sex was something that you didn't do, but he was actually molesting all the guys. Yeah, that's right. Remember that? Yeah, that's right. And then they were like honest about it. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. He kind of talked me into that. <laughs> How and did I'm he do like, that? I'm not gay, but he talked me into it. <laughs> I'm looking at dude like, dude, you know. I'm sorry, well, man, you're gay. Well, no, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just like, well, how did you jo couldn't talk me did, into that? Shit? How did Joe Exotic talk his husbands into like having? They were both straight. It was not. He didn't meth. talk him into that shit. That was meth. It was meth. That was meth. <laughs> that was, that's what I was gonna say. He didn't talk him into it. it. Was meth. <laughs> they were gay for meth. <laughs> yeah, they'll do anything to get it. Well, it's not, yeah. like I said, a lot of a lot of uh, drug addicts and stuff like that will do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's, it's just a job. Yeah. That's how they're well, looking at it. Well, you know, I get fair enough. It's, it's like doing porn. It's like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, uh, well, no, you know, you know I, what I'm, what? I couldn't do it, man. You'd have yeah. to, you'd have, you'd you have, have to, you have to be a certain type of person. You'd have to be a certain kind of person. You'd really have to need that meth. Yeah. And I, you know, I wouldn't I, I've never wanted shit. anything that bad. That <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Scientology, somebody just a couple of minutes ago, somebody sent me a message. They were commenting on, um, our trilogy of terror review yeah. and i actually didn't know this but they said karen black was a scientologist yeah and the reason that she she had uh she died of cancer and she never went to get it treated because scientologists think they can treat everything well no some people just let it go powers. i mean your 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 grandmother didn't go no, yeah. she did. She did, but then she said, "Fuck but it." But then I she said, die. "Fuck it." Well, after because after they did the surgery and after they did everything, then they were kind of like, "Oh, well, we didn't get it all." And she was hasn't been mentioned in anything recent with the church. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it's been a while since she died, so maybe why that's maybe that's why I never heard because like I had thought I knew like most of the famous uh, Scientologists, but I had never heard her. Uh... She must have been what they call public. Yeah, she just well, a lot the, of the celebrities are. Yeah, they just take the courses. And they're not like super. They're not. Super in, they're, they're not, not like really living in the yeah, dorms. They're going there, or right. Anything. They're not living with them, and they're not. You know, then they just give them money. You know, those are just public Scientologists. Which they're the, the public Scientologists is not the same as somebody who's in the seal. Yeah, the experience is completely different. Yeah, or somebody who's in staff. Yeah, you know, the, the, they really man, they really micromanage them. Public, they don't. They just bilk them for money. If you want to like read something really horrifying, here's another book recommendation for you. Read uh, Beyond Belief by yeah. Jenna Miscavige that's his niece she was raised in it and it is horrifying yeah horrible so yeah that's well, that's, that's my book recommendation for it, if you want to cheer yourself up there's a real good <laughs> youtube channel written uh, uh, it's kind of, it's managed by um um somebody who left the church she was real high ranking i forgot her, her name's drawn a blank right now um Anyway, uh, they have a show on YouTube called uh, Surviving Scientology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have some interviews with, like, old classic members that knew L. Ron Hubbard and what it was like and how fucked up his teeth were and shit like that. You know what I mean? His and, mouth always bothered me yeah, so and, much. And really, the story... I, I like the stories of the old church when L. Ron was still alive. Yeah. Because there was some, some of those stories were fucking bizarre. You know, they're living in barracks and pouring drinks and fucking... Just, you know... Pretty interesting of how it was like. And then the secret compounds that were built out in the desert to protect the fucking holy script on fucking <laughs> titanium plates, you know. <laughs> and the guys that guard it out in the middle of the desert commit suicide because there's nothing to do out there. Just, <laughs> and they got guns and shit. Crazy. Yeah. What you doing? Let's it's like a little. prison out in the middle of the desert with like five guys in it. You should be able to see Baby Cookie in a Baby second. Cookie's gonna, Here she comes. There she is. <laughs> Coming to visit. Coming Aww. to visit. Look at her little butt. She's like, look at my Don't butt. you know that you are a pookie star? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's kind of a thing that we always like. Whenever we hear sing a dick. song, we try yeah. to like sing part of the song, but like put her name in it. Yeah. I don't know if she likes it or not. Nah. She just kind of looks she, at us like being a pokey star. But she's like, whatever, mommy and daddy, yeah. you guys are so weird. Is there anything else you had to talk about? I don't think so. Look at her sticking her no. butt in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What you biting? Oh, She's biting no. on that little knob. Yeah, she likes to chew on wood for some reason. I buy her chew sticks all the time, and she it doesn't really. doesn't matter. No. She, she just, wants to chew on random shit. She just wants to chew on random stuff. All right, so uh, have a rest of the uh, good rest of the Wednesday. Rest of Wednesday? What the fuck am I yeah. talking about? I don't know. <laughs> and we will uh, talk to you guys again tomorrow.